This is USC wide receiver Jordan Addison. And he's in the red zone here against tight man coverage. And he has this ability at the line of scrimmage, I think is very good to get off of the player and then work back to the ball, create that separation, very crafty type of route runner. Despite his size, he actually fared against man coverage very well, 4.4 yards per route against man coverage at USC. Really like this, and it shows, I think, a core element of his game where he gets on the corner's toes and changes direction really fluidly. See, boom, outside leverage, because he knows he's gonna make an outside breaking route, but instead, he's already either looking back at the quarterback or looking inside to force the corner in that direction and then the slight push off and he's not running you know parallel to the goal line here in fact he's coming back towards the pylon to make the throw a bit easier perfect placement and perfect touchdown and this is what you get with a 5 11 173 pound wide receiver in jordan addison 100 catches for 1600 yards and 17 touchdowns with kenny pickett at pittsburgh and then your usc trojan stole him during his final year on route to 59 receptions, 875 yards and eight touchdowns with maybe future first overall pick in Caleb Williams. Hayden, what are we getting from Jordan Addison? Cause it's a weird dynamic, right? He's 173 pounds and I'll lead with this prior to 2023, just 32 wide receivers. At the NFL combine in the last 20 years weighed 173 pounds or less. And this draft class, there are five of them and he's one of them. And on top of that, his 40 yard dash is in the 40th percentile. When you weight adjusted, it obviously gets way, way worse. In my model, he's a 15th percentile adjusted spark athlete. I do think that we overrate size speed at wide receiver versus other positions. At running back, it obviously matters. You're gonna be breaking tackles against uh, linebackers. For edge rushers, you have to win with power through an offensive tackle. At the wide receiver position, speed score and the regular 40 yard dash have the same predictive power. It's because you can win with space. And in particular, when you are looking for outliers, and that's what Jordan Addison is gonna be, the tape has to show the ability to get off of uh, corners against press man coverage. And you have to win on, like, on that route where you're winning in blind spots. You have to have a plan in place. You have to yep. know defensive coverages. You have to win with your hands away from the body. You can't be con uh, doing these, these catches against your chest. And I think that Jordan Addison does a lot of that. Now, where I think he's going to win, he's not an X receiver by any means. At Pitt, he played in the slot on 68% of the snaps. At USC, that dropped to 23. But at USC, they threw way more screens to him. They got him in motion a little bit more. I think he's going to be a slot player. Will be able to play the Z in two wide receiver sets. And he caught a lot of passes in both offenses. Here's my two-liner take on him. He's a three-level route runner who gets on your toes and changes directions really fluidly. I think he tracks the ball incredibly well, especially down the field. You see him kind of contort his body and again, track it with his eyes and it puts him in really good spots. A potentially cap ceiling due to weight and also average to below average athleticism mm -hmm. when you you know weight that with his size. That's not to say he's not going to be productive. I see him on almost a spectrum of Darnell Mooney to Emmanuel Sanders to T.Y. Hilton. And like those guys are all extremely productive and can win in certain ways. He's just so good at getting into off corners, hip pockets, and then putting them in stress. Like he eats up that cushion. And then once he's in your hip pocket, you've almost certainly lost because I'm not gonna call him a technician per se, but he has such a great feel for creating that sliver of separation. And I think using his body in a pretty, pretty good way mm -hmm. to play bigger than his current status is. Yeah, and the kind of weird thing about him, even though he is so small, he broke 21 tackles at Pitt in 2021, which is like top 10 in all college football. And then at USC, they would throw him a bunch of screens which obviously you have to break some tackles for somebody his size like this play right here he just has some instincts which is like i think hard to kind of track with the combine numbers but i think it's super important for the wide receiver position uh like i said earlier 4.4 yards per route run against man coverage in these isolated wide receiver routes he had 3.8 yards per route run that was the best of the top six consensus wide receivers in this draft class seven yards after the catch in 2022. So compare that with the 3.3% drop rate. You can kind of see how this outlier can hit now. The Smitty comparisons, I think we're talking about two totally different players here. Smitty had like Devonta Smith, I'm talking about way longer 
Um, I think you're looking at like Darnell Mooney to Deontay Johnson kind of wins in similar ways. A smaller version of CeeDee Lamb is I think kind of the profile that he's going to play oh. in the slot, can win vertical. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, I think is just a better player, better prospect in general. And then if you're really going to dream big, Stefan Diggs, I think does a fantastic job of man manipulating players and is very good with the ball tracking skills. Obviously, Steph Diggs is much bigger than Jordan Addison too. So outlier type of player here, but I think that I'm willing to bet on him to some degree. Now, I, I'm with you. I don't think he's going to be record-breaking by any means, but there is a path to him being a target earner in his last 35 games. He had 80% of them caught at least five receptions. That goes back to him being a true freshman. He's only 21.3 years old on draft night, which is like really, really young. So maybe you can put on a little bit of weight here, but I'm with you. The, the size with that speed lowers the overall ceiling here, but I don't want to put too much emphasis on that athleticism because... I think his well, below average when you weight it with weight. Yeah, it's 15th percentile. But yes. his craftiness shows up on tape. I think he like plays a little bit faster because, like I you agree. said, corners are just like scared to death of this dude. There are times when he'll double tap twice in a route mm -hmm. and force the corner to step up. And then again, it's that awareness that he has that he just simply turns and is faster mm -hmm. than than the corner. I know this is your guy. I will say this. Kind of. The, the more I watched wide receivers in this class, the more I did like Jordan Addison. There are ways, clearly, that he wins on the outside and the inside. That almost hybrid position that he can be out there in two wide receiver sets. And if you feel like the matchup is better in the slot in three wide receiver sets, and you can shove him in there. I just think it's going to be a cap ceiling, though. That's not a I bad agree. thing. Like, he's I not going to be, I think, a top 20 overall wide receiver in the NFL. Maybe production wise, he can be one. I think he has a chance to be. I'm saying pure talent when we rank them because again, the size athleticism combo might keep him from that. But again, at the very least as a rookie, he's going to help vertically. You know, like he's really good vertically in terms of his ball tracking and is able to create that spacing. And he's also a really smart player on screens, I saw. Yeah. I don't know if a lot of people were talking about this, but just some of those tunnel screens or stuff like they get Devontae Smith on in Philadelphia, his catch and feel for the blocking. Again, I know I keep using the, the awareness word and the feel word, but it's calling cards for Jordan Addison. Yeah, in my model, he comes out as the 90th percentile in his production. If you look back at that sophomore year, I mean, he won the freaking Belindikoff Award. Uh, 94th percentile in that season last year, 68th percentile. He changed his role in the offense. Caleb Williams was dominating. He's more of a playmaker. And Jordan Addison is more of a timing guy. So there's maybe you can dream a little bit bigger. And he's just so damn young. Um, and he was supposed to be this guy as well. So it's a weird combination here. It's not Fair. a comfortable like draft pick because of all the reasons we've outlined. When you watch the tape versus like the other guys in this draft class, his just route running instincts timing ball skills ball tracking trust in his hands all that stuff is just on another level than most of these guys aside from like jsn yeah gumby like movements too Bendy, there, there's some real flair yeah to his game is there a chance he like could be calvin really i think calvin really is too fast for this but like you're talking about a strider can win on the outside uh, i think these are like the i would go like the the ceiling potential it is like seating lamb steph Diggs, calvin really I mean, I mean, no 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 we there even mentioning Steph Diggs in this conversation is taking it one step too far for me. I, I cannot ride with you on that train because I think Stefan Diggs is one of the top five, six wide receivers in the league. Jordan Addison was a little bit better than Stefan Diggs as a college player. So I think I think there's a chance. And he's not like Stefan Stefan Diggs isn't like some freak athlete. So. No, 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 no. But he literally is basketball, Allen Iverson, isolation moves and mm -hmm. and one on one coverage. This is my crusade to not compare players to all pros. So yeah, like, we're talking about range of outcomes here. I think like that's if, if he hits, that's what he's going to look like. He's not going to look like Julio Jones or anything like that. I'm just talking about yeah. like. I, I, I like Emmanuel Sanders. I think Calvin Ridley at the top. And like you said with Calvin, T.Y. Hilton is the name. Again, I threw out there. Like Calvin Ridley, I'm with you. There were some Gumby-like movements, stop-start ability, just change of direction to create separation. And I believe either his second to last year with the Atlanta Falcons, he led the NFL in 20-plus yard targets. Like, mm -hmm. again, at the very least, this is where Jordan Addison is helping you immediately. And I, I do love what you said, like dominant at Pitt. And that was mostly a slot player, but did move around. And then at USC solely focused really on one side of the field. So we really have like the full spectrum of routes run 
for Jordan Addison. And that is not something, as you said, we can say with the rest of this group. And if a team ranks him as the number one wide receiver in this class, I understand it. Yeah. I do understand it while watching and going through all these wide receivers. It should drastically change throughout all wide receiver rooms unless every single one has like JSN at the top because right. what you see is what you get. Yeah, it is interesting. Daniel Jeremiah and Dane Brugler, uh, they both have Jordan Addison still after the combine as their wide receiver one in this class, yet nobody in fantasy land like puts him there like that. So I put a late round one grade on him. Of course you um, I have him as my wide receiver too. I definitely would take him over Quinton Johnson. I just think that he has way better feel for the game. Um, and we'll see. I think worst case, you have a good slot receiver. And I think at the best case, he's in two wide receiver sets and he is averaging eight targets per game just because all of this stuff translated and they get in the screen game and he's just so nasty um, one on one. So we'll see. It's it's not the most comfortable evaluation when he ran that four four nine at 173 pounds. That doesn't feel good. But I think I just keep going back to the tape. I'm like, damn, like he's he really is that good. And just to take it all the way back of the 32 wide receivers of the last 20 years of the combine that weighed 173 or less, three names definitely hit of those 32. It's Deshaun Jackson, it's Devonte Smith, and it's Hollywood Brown, just to consider. A lot of vertical players, and as we say, at the very least, Jordan Addison can help you vertically. If you wanna draft Mr. Addison, just like Hayden is gonna do a lot this summer, Underdog Fantasy is the place to do it. The link is in the description down below. We'll match your first deposit up to $100. So if you've never played best ball, there's no better time than now to do so. And don't leave the channel. Go and check out the rest of the wide receiver prospects we have. Hit that subscribe button and even the notification bell so you know whenever the next one is posted. Bye, Dom, baby.